All right, here we go. We're back. Miss Boo in the building. Welcome back to the Unrestricted Podcast. I'm your host, Ish Berry. With me in the building is woman that helped me pay the bills in this motherfucker. Right <laughs> on, <Blue>. right on. <laughs> <laughs> pay for the paint job. Okay. Thanks for the new paint, you know. Mm-hmm. Shoot, thanks for the mics, you know. Appreciate everything you do. We got Miss Blue. We, um, rap extraordinaire, Miss hey. Blue, in I the like building. That. It might be, feel free to use that catchphrase. I won't charge you for that one. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Okay. I wait till you go on tour. Nikki, like, oh, I need my residuals. No. I call Dicey. You know I then? call Dicey you and Di- Dicey. Dicey and you know Danny what? and Kamisha. I ain't mad at you. You gotta get your coins. You gotta get your coins. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. Uh, and speaking of rap, that's why we are here this yeah. fine January evening to talk about what it's like being a female rapper. And actually, somebody did send in a question, so we're gonna get the fan court, mm-hmm. the listener questions. Um, before we, uh, you know, leave today. So I guess we could start from the top. I mean, you was like on the second episode, you talked about what got you into rap. So people that oh, want to yeah. know all that, I'll leave a link in the, in the show notes to go to that episode. But far as you being a female rapper, I guess it start from walk me through when you're putting music together, what, what your day is like from morning to to tonight well uh for me like the process can switch up i've uh noticed that i'm one of those people that like get in my car and drive the city houston got a lot of places that you can go just a lot of stretch of land so i'll play the beat in the car and just drive and i'll start you know coming up with like my hook and then i'll come home i have a home studio Mm -hmm. at my house so it's easy for me to jump in there and kind of play with the style and how i want to deliver the music so I, I like to for me I like to drink like I have me some clear poured in my cup okay and um, I just get to rocking out to the beat like I let I let it run for like 30 minutes of just playing it in my head before I start actually like letting my pen shine you mm. know yeah so um, it can be a tense um, process. I know for me, because I stay in my head and I overanalyze shit, okay. and I always want it to be on point. So it's it's for me, it's an all night thing. Like, yeah. That's just for one song or like a whole album. Oh, why you? Why did you have to say album? Because I'm that's sorry. a whole different situation. Okay, well, it, well, it, yeah. Walk us oh, through the man. whole the whole process of both. You know, just. One song and, yeah. and an album, you know? So, okay, so I haven't put out an album. I put out, like, mixtapes, and mm-hmm. I put out EPs. Um, I had a mixtape that had, like, 12 songs on it, and then I had this EP that had six, about six songs on it. Okay. It's like a short album, right? hmm And that process can be very, very challenging because it's like you get all the beats at one time mm-hmm. and it's like you had I had to really sit down and figure out which beat I wanted to attack first okay so for me when I'm putting out like an EP or a long extended project I go into like modes where like sometimes I get writer's block and I hate that shit because mm. when I get writer's block I don't care how good my day is going I can't seem to think of something for this track so I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to answer my phone. I go into like seclusion until I could get my lyrics together for the song. Gotcha. And just imagine having multiple songs on a project. It's tough. Okay. It's tough. So what's the process like in the studio? Because for those like such as myself, I've never been in a recording studio mm-hmm. in my life, oddly enough. And I know a lot of artists and musicians and stuff just, I mean, not why they're performing you know doing their thing so right. what's that whole experience like um for me i like people that i've worked with before mm-hmm. and um like i like to just listen to the song usually when i am when i get into the studio i already know how the song go and i record really fast it's just something that I've oh, always done. One-handed quitters? Yeah, like maybe a couple of takes, depending on like if I hear it back, if I hear something I could do different. But it don't take me. It's never taken me long to record. Uh, once I got taught how to professionally record, it's just come natural for me. Okay. And I just like to um, get in there, get out, run it back, listen to it, do my ad libs, play with the vocals and the sound, 
let them mix and master it, work their magic, and go from there. Like it, it literally don't take me an hour to record. Mm. Yeah, I pretty much have it knocked out under an hour. Shit. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, as a woman in the in the studio, and we know that music and how pretty much entertainment as a whole is a male dominated industry. Have you ever felt discriminated against in the studio? Because again, these most of the I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, okay. that most of these engineers, producers, and people that overall work in the studio are men. So mm -hmm. I guess my question is, do you ever feel like discriminated against? Do people, you know, give these guys give you a rough time because you're a female? And it's like, hey, hurry up, do your shit, get the fuck out of here because we got, you know, a man coming in next. You right. see what I'm trying to trying to say? I would feel bad for them if they chose that. No. Oh, shit. To answer your question, mm -hmm. I've never had that issue. <laughs> Anybody know Miss Blue? No, that I don't. Even, I wouldn't even play. Let somebody play with me like that. Like I get the utmost respect when I record around men because I come in there, I got my game face on, I'm serious, and I'm actually. They know that I'm getting ready to kill it. Like, I don't have time for all that, like, silly shit. We could talk later, but right now I'm going to get the song recorded and done. Like, I don't have no issues. Like, I get a lot of respect when I come into a studio. I, I'm always asked to even sign their walls. Like, it's a, Damn, it's that's a, dope. Yeah, it's a thing in music. Like, they're like, hey, Blue, you going to sign the wall? Because I come in there and, and put it down in the studio, and they want me on the wall. So, yeah, no no disrespect. Ever. Yeah. Like, I can't remember a time. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um. Because you're, again, not to sound chauvinistic or anything, but because you're a woman, have you had anyone make any type of sexual advances to you? Any, you know, any uh, that, you know, the, the fuck shit that we've been hearing the last couple years, like the Harvey Weinstein stuff, the Bill Cosby right. stuff, the R. Kelly stuff and so forth. Yeah, um, I think being a, a woman entertainer, you're going, it's almost expected not saying that you have to accept that, but that's just what it is. You know, you, you're going to have guys come at you and try to holler at you. You're going to have guys that, like I've had guys um, record the song and then not want to give it to me after the fact because they couldn't talk to me or oh, because I won't give them no play or nothing like something like that. Um, yeah, I've had my run-ins where I had to like call my people up. Yeah, like, because don't play with me like that. Damn. Seriously. So, yeah, that's right. So, mm -hmm. a guy literally hold your music that I'm assuming that you paid for. You paid for your time in the studio, engineers to do their thing and so forth, but they'll hold the music because you're not sleeping with them, basically. I've had that done to me a long time ago. Like, now, wow. I don't, no one would play with me like mm -hmm. that. But, like, then when I was, like, really just out in the scenes, like, I had guys that, like, test me or maybe they didn't know much about me and was like, oh, maybe she green and she'll do anything for, you know, something strange for some change. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. no, not with me. And so, uh, yeah, I have had guys, uh, I done had to have my people pull up to get my shit back because, yeah. Can you, can you talk about the situation in particular? I want some more details. Yeah, um, there was a situation where, like, the guys couldn't write. And so the um, owner, the CEO was like, we're trying to put out this project. Can you write for the guys? Can you help co-write? So I had hope, I helped co-write under the understanding that because I'm writing 17 songs, I'm not paying for the studio time because of that. Okay. So this when was- When you say the CEO, the CEO who was the, the studio? The CEO of the uh, record label okay, at the time okay. I was dealing with. So- the CEO uh, comes back and we're, we're done with the whole, I think he was like really on some like real fuck shit because he comes back after the fact and he's trying to holler at me. And I'm like, before that, he never disrespected me, never came to me sideways. He even um, got married during the time. So I didn't think nothing of it like until he came to me like that. And I was like, you got, just got married. Like what, the, what type of shit you on? Yeah. And I'm so, so was yeah. he black? I was, of course, yeah. Damn, I, I, damn, I, I could have swore they say black men don't cheat. <laughs> yeah, this this dude definitely was a cheater, but I wouldn't try to. I wouldn't mm -hmm. try to do that with him. And I, I just was like, no, I wrote the songs for y'all. I want my my music, or you know, we'll have to have a, we're gonna have a problem. So I guess he thought because I was a woman, it was gonna be some sweet stuff or like. So I called my my cousins that's like in the military. 
No, I and I was that. like, here's the Addy. I need you to pull up. Damn. Yeah, like, no games. Like, this dude is not giving me my music. And so, words were exchanged, and shiny objects were, were shown. Damn. And I got my shit back. Wow. Yeah, but it's like then, after you go through something like that, it's like, back then especially, I had this real bad, like, my attitude was really fucked up, so I didn't want to promote it. I was like, I'm not I was gonna, gonna give them free yeah, promo. I was, I was, I was good. Thinking, and it was like, a bad point, mix Yeah. Damn. I mean, it is what it is, but no, I, I found that disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you're going to wait till it's time to put the music out and then proposition yourself upon me and then block me from getting my shit. Yeah. That's not cool. Damn, that, yeah. oh, damn, I'm sorry you had to go through it. That's messed I mean, you up. you go through it to, to grow through it and to learn how to deal with the next one. Because, oh, they were, they were, they was really trying back then, like, to to play with me. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not that chick. I had to come out of my heels a couple of times. I used to purposely wear, wear heels with spikes on them. Remember back then? <laughs> yeah, I remember those. those I had those. I had. I kept a, a like different color pair of them things, <laughs> for real. Wow. That's just like how how much like the street life I was in, like as far as uh, trying to do this music. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's the only story. Like, no, no guys. It's never like physically while you're in the studio or music video shoot or anything, you mm -hmm. know, tried to, you know, make any sexual advances um, to you? Oh, uh, no. Like, in the studio, nah. Because it's like, I feel like, I always tell my girls, like, most guys, they are only going to try if you let them, if you make them think that they have a chance with you. Like, okay. if you're showing them like you're flirting with them and you're showing them like they have a chance most men are too intimidated to even touch you or yeah. grope you they don't know what you want feel for the yeah situation. they yeah, yeah. And, and so if you're you know i always came in there with this like unless you know me personally then you know like you know mm -hmm. but i always come in there like with like my suit my imaginary suit and tie like yeah they like damn she business, business. like yeah like don't try me like that don't touch damn. on me don't no fuck that let's just keep it business because all it takes is this person to say oh she coming here she like this she easy and in a small a big but small community of entertainment you don't want that on attached to your name mm -hmm. i work too hard for my brand for people to be like, she easy, because uh, trust me when I say I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Never wow. been. Damn. Okay. So who are some of your, on, your, on a lighter note here, who are some of your influence in rap, both male and female? So uh, as far as female, Missy Elliott, Nicki Minaj, um, MC Light, Foxy mm. Brown, Lil Kim, um, Queen Latifah, Okay. Uh, just to name a few. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And as far as the men, Jay Z, uh, I like Kanye West. Um, Diddy has had some runs where you know, to me, his word game was crazy. At once upon a time. Yeah. Fabulous. He always okay. been dope. Yeah. Cassidy. I don't remember that one. He's a uh, Cassidy was like known for like underground rap, like bar, okay. like spitting bar for bar and stuff like that. But he had like my drink and my two step. Oh, okay, that's yeah. Right. Okay, so okay. yeah, uh, song, definitely, yeah. definitely, my boy Cassidy. Okay. Yeah, that was a club banger back in the day. Yeah, to to for clubs. sure. Yeah. I love. I I used to really rock out to that song. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you balance work? And family, because you know you're you know you're pretty open about your family right. on social media. So anyone who knows you, or if they don't, and they're listening or watching this, you know they should know. You know, you know you're married, you got three kids. Um, your your youngest is in kindergarten now, right? Yeah. Or is it kindergarten or pre K? She's in kindergarten. Okay, kindergarten. Your oldest is getting ready to graduate high school mm -hmm. uh, in May or whatever. So, because I mean, it could take like you said with music and entertainment. You know, that's an all day. 12 16 hours yeah. and then if you're if you're getting booked for shows you know do, doing the whole travel thing how do you balance being a mom a wife and, and, and an artist um i think the way i balance it is just by 
doing it. I don't think too hard. I don't think too hard about it. I just do it. Like you have to do it because where you'll lack, you'll start having issues. Mm -hmm. You'll start, you know, the world around you will cave in. And so to prevent the world from caving in, you have to finish the foundation that you lay. And I, my foundation is my family. I put in the work, so I let I talk to them. I let them know. I text. I, you know, I, I give gifts. I show love, like to let them know, hey, I'm busy, but I'm still thinking about you. Mm, and after cool. this project, I set uh, time to hang out with people. Like some people solo, they want me to just hang out with just them one on one. Like I took my my daughter to Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, recently, and that was our little hangout because I was on a movie set, mm -hmm. and she, you know, we, I, I miss her, and she especially miss me. So it's just you just really just gotta find the balance and really want to do it. Mm -hmm. You gotta make time for it. You make people make time for what they love and what they want. And so I love my family, so I'm gonna make time. It's something that I I just have to do. I don't look at it more than that. Okay. Did your daughter get to meet Chuck E. Cheese that day? The she did. Big mouse he, she hugged him. He hugged her back. I thought oh, that was so cute. sweet. Yeah, that's cute. That was sweet. Dang. She out there making moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she making, <laughs> she making big moves with the fat rap, with the cheese. Mm. Being a female rapper, do you feel that as an industry that female rappers are objectified and they have to look a certain way and what I mean by look you know being half naked having you know cosmetic surgery done big you know it's like you can be the the best lyricist in the world but if you ain't got a fat ass then they're not trying to market promote you even listen to you give you the time of day what are your right. thoughts on that uh yeah for sure um mm -hmm. you know when I get asked that question I just have to when I first started getting asked this question I didn't do enough research to properly answer the question. Mm -hmm. So now anything I said before this interview is not valid. So uh, after I come up to my conclusion and now in my research, I know that the, the market for female rap has been exploited and, and dumbed down to just sex because that's what the consumers are asking for. Mm -hmm. The consumers do not support women with their clothes on. I do not care what anyone says. At this point, I won't even debate it. I see it too much on social media. Mm. They over skip a lot. There are a lot of women, underground women. I might not know their names, yeah. but there are a lot of women out there that just that do not show their ass. They're not. And they're not getting that radio play. It, there's a, um, I should have seen it before the interview, but mm -hmm. I had looked on Twitter and it was about six female rappers they claimed were the hottest six female rappers. You trying to tell me you found six pictures, uh, everybody ass out. Damn. Not one picture, and I have it in my phone if I'm lying. Not one picture of the girls they had clothes on. I'm sure you can find a, I'm sure, I saw maybe. Yeah, everybody got, yeah, yeah. Well, where is that picture? So Weedy has been a picture like, I would use for making a stallion since she graduated college last year. That would, I would use a cap and gown would, picture oh, no, 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 of walking no. the stage of Texas Southern. No. Like that would be the one, mm -mm. you know. Like, uh, uh, and this was a, an entertainment music blog. Yeah. And it was like, which one of these women has had the hottest run? And I'm just like, wow, the pictures. So yes, the consumers are up, are the ones that's obsessed with body, with sex, and hearing it. Yeah. So the labels are gonna put more women out there that's willing to show their body and willing to be very sexually liberated than a woman that has restrictions. And that's just what it is. I, Sex is selling. Yeah, and I hate to agree with you on that. And actually, I did an experiment today. Mm -hmm. In you know, breaking news for people, I made a Facebook group for the podcast and I'll put the link in the description. But this morning, I dropped the question in the group and I use this picture. You see how many people like that right. and saw it? Oh, okay, that, yeah. that picture, right? Mm -hmm. So on my personal Facebook page, now the strange thing is in this picture, no one sent, you know, uh, a question in, right? Okay. They're all liking the picture. They probably didn't even read the thing like, hey, we're recording right. today, sending your pictures. They just see, ass. Everybody right. in the group <laughs> liked it. But then I go on my personal Facebook page 
And I used this picture of you when you did that, uh, oh. that concert at MLK. You're fully clothed. You got the mic in your hand. I caught a good shot of you performing. And someone from... Um, someone who's not in the group but saw that on my personal Facebook page sent in a question. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? It's yeah. like... The picture I use with your cheeks out from the Shake That Ass video. That's crazy. No one and, sent in a, a request. They just look at the goes. ass, but then, you know, obviously my friend, you know, and someone commented on this, and yeah. then, you know, so, and someone was like, oh, okay, well, they're recording, they want questions, and she sent in one, which we'll get to uh, later. So, mm, I mean, that's crazy. as you was explaining, I was like, maybe she's wrong. You know me, I like to play devil's advocate. I was like, yeah. well, fuck. I just did a thing today. <laughs> it proves it. My own support base do that to me. I post a picture, like, you know, like in a full body suit. Not oh, a picture anything. like this. You full, yeah, it's you like just doing your stuff. job. Yeah. Oh, but I post the body. Even the women are like, oh, look at that body. Oh, look at that ass. Oh, look at them legs. Even women want to see skin and, mm -hmm. and, and support, you know, when, when you have less clothes. It's just the way this generation is. Sexualized sex yeah, sales over, and over a label is not special. going to invest in something that they don't know for sure. We know sex sales, mm -hmm. so that's what they're gonna go for those girls that that's about their life. So, do you, with that being said, do you personally feel to need is that part of the reason why? You maintain your voluptuous figure. You you got a fat ass. We just showed a picture there, and you know you last year you or oh, year before. How long has it been now since you had a tummy tuck and a light? It's been a year. It's been a little yeah. over a year. Okay, you know you went to Miami, got some work done. So, is that part of the reason why you yourself a maintain your your fat ass? Because I mean, if you didn't want to maintain, you could get liposuction out your ass nowadays. I mean, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You know you could do enough exercises. To, to eliminate to it. it. Yeah, right. to lose it. Exactly, you know. And you could just say, fuck it. I'm in Houston. I can eat all the food I want. Mm -hmm. I don't care about having a tiny waist or whatever. Right. So is that part of your reason? Because you know as a female rapper, hey, if I don't have a certain body and show it off, mm -hmm. then, you know, no one no one's going to say shit to me, you know? Right. Um, um, damn right. That's part of my reason. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Cause you got big booty privilege. That shit real. That yeah. is a real fucking thing. I don't care what nobody tell you. I have had the green light on so many things. I can't even be. I can't. I can't not. I can't sit here and lie. I have been treated like a damn Nubian queen because she I have a queen. nice size ass. I'm not trying to sit there and lie. I mean, for, you stupid. <laughs> but for real, I love that movie. Now mm -hmm. I want to go see it. But look, like, for real, yeah. um, I done turned up because it's yeah. funny when we talk about this. Like, I'm not going, one thing I'll never be is fake. Yeah. I do like having a nice size ass. Mm. It that comes with perks. And even when a guy know he can't smash, he's still going to be nice to you. He's still going to give you some type of discount. He still, it, trust me when I say, I know what I'm talking about. And with that being said, People I can't see me, but I'm sitting here shaking my head because I'm guilty of that too, yeah, God damn it. Look, wait, wait. And you know me, I try to treat everybody The walls. Fair. You want to talk about the the, You want to talk about this paint job, I mean, I'm the walls saying, here? We got a discount on our room. No, we didn't get shit. Okay. You got a discount. Explain a, the story, okay. please. <laughs> how these walls got painted. He said how these child. walls got painted. <laughs> I know I just came in. I had like my sweatsuits on. You can see the little booty, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a little crop about top. Booty. I'm sorry. So, so, so I had a little crop top and uh, saw the gentleman that was painted, and he was just like, um, "Whoa, you're beautiful." Mind you, this day I'm not even like beat with the makeup. Niggas nothing. don't care about makeup. I'm just saying, I, I mean, okay, I, I, you, you yeah, said you're the scene. Right. I'm sorry. No, you're, you're right. The they scene. don't Let me care. shut up. I'm sorry. Let me just and me. I walked out of the room, and he was painting. I mean, I walked past him. He was painting. I came in the room, and I was like, I can really use. This I can you know really use um, a paint job in our room because there's a big event going on. Hmm. And literally he comes over there so quick and he's like real professional still. And he's like, um, no disrespect, I'm not trying to be mean, but you are lovely and you have a very beautiful face. And you do. Um, you do. I will give you a very nice discount on this uh, on the you know your painting. And so he showed me his normal prices. Compared to what I paid, 
I don't care if you divulge. You, you want to divulge what his number was to, to what, um, what you paid? Anywhere between 500 to 1000 easily. With Damn. with just this right here, okay. because he had to do two layers of coating. It took him a few hours because he he double painted it. Okay, so that means he did a like, great he job. He had to I wait for it to dry, come yeah. back, do it again. Yeah, and he did it section by section, not okay. all at one time. Okay, so he was here for a long time. So yeah, he was like, you know, usually this is what I charge, and I looked, I said, oh. Okay, so what you usually charge though? And he was like, yeah, but no, for you, for you, just for you. Cause beautiful and just, you know, yes, 80. Hot damn. And I was like, mm, won't he do it? <laughs> won't he do it? Won't that the ass do it? Gods, <laughs> the booty guy. The booty guy. <laughs> Jeez, I mean, love it. I mean, hey, That's I'm not, one discount. thing, I told you I'm not gonna lie about shit. Like, yeah. it does come with privilege, but at the end of the day, I do like the fact that women are shifting the power of when we want to show our ass and our skin and what we what we want to do with it. And that's what I like. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Do you feel that yeah, because I mean, I know we're we're our own worst enemy and I know you personally you always thinking, oh well, you know, I need to do this, I need to work on this and it was like, oh look, you you find how you how you are. But do you feel after everything you've had, you know, you've had done, do you feel that you still need to get more done as a female rapper far as the way you look? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get more. I'm this excited. Oh, this year is going. <laughs> this year is going down. This. I'm getting some shit like chop, cut, sucked. You want to talk about that? What, what, yeah, what I'm getting to? so I'm getting my arms because I just kind of want my I don't want my arms as skinny as they were in high school, but I kind of need them like medium skinny. So I'm gonna have them suck a little bit out the. You arms. know there's a thing called barbell races that that can do that. I'm, I'm gonna be doing those too, but it's like still I want I want to be my version of perfect for me that works for me, not anyone else. Like what when I just want to be like oh girl like you know what I'm saying like yeah. And so, yeah, so I'm getting that. And um, there now, so after my surgery, I didn't know shit about no dog ears. What do you mean? So when you get a tummy tuck, mm -hmm. there's a thing called a dog ear. Okay. So I the tummy that. tuck is from hip, usually from hip yeah. to hip. Okay. You're supposed to wear a band, and I did. I did everything I was supposed to do. But sometimes there's a piece of skin that decides to lump up here mm -hmm. just a little bit and poke out a little bit. In the tummy tuck community, it's called a dog ear. A dog ear? A dog ear. Okay. And so I want, it's it's small, but I, that it needs to go. So I need to get that sucked mm -hmm. in a little bit more of the back, some under here. So yeah, yeah, that's wow. what I plan on doing. You sure that's it? That's, that's it? Yeah, because I never, I said I'd never, like, pick with my face, like, change right, you and alter the appearance. You don't need to do that to yourself, but especially no. your face. Yeah, man. I just, and I, oh, I want my, um, so I want liposuction. I want more liposuction. Because, no, it's a reason, because. <laughs> people should see the look on my face. I know, I'm just like, but the just reason it for ago. it is people think when you get a tummy tuck, your stomach is going to be completely flat like a washboard. Mm -hmm. But depending on your BMI level, body your body, mass yeah. Index. And let's just say, and it's just an honest truth, if you go to get a tummy tuck and your BMI is close to 30, mm -hmm. don't expect your stomach to be extremely flat. That's okay. just the truth. You need to get it down to like in the 20s. Like 27 is a decent one on okay. down. But anything close, very close to 30, like 28, 29, your stomach is going to be flatter than it was, but it's not going to be tight. And a lot of girls don't tell the truth about the multiple sessions they have mm -hmm. of, of getting their tummy done. Like a lot of them get the tummy tuck and then they get the lipo like four or five sessions. I'm not trying to get like an itty bitty 15 inch waist. I don't care about so that. So what is I your just, waist goal? That's a good question. I don't have, honestly, I don't care about a waist goal. You just really care about what it looks in the mirror, right? I just want the stomach gone, like all the uh, way as flat as it can possibly get. I've never been like Well, you know, abs obsessed. are made in the kitchen. It's really what you, what, you, what we eat. Well, that's we what, say, we, and that's the thing, because blue love to eat. 
You know what I'm saying? Well, then you're going to be getting liposuctions in your stomach Someone told for the me rest that. of your Someone life. Someone told so. me that. But if I have the money, then, I mean, I'm changing slowly my lifestyle. But I still have, like, times where, like, when the holidays came, I ate shamelessly. Yeah, I mean, we're in January. The holidays and, just and passed. Yeah. So, right now, I'm fighting a lot of fat from the holidays. Yeah. Real talk. Because right I don't so. really even eat just horribly bad. Yeah. I really don't. But the holiday, I mean, I ate. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I was. I was so. at your house Thanksgiving. Shit, we went to your mom's. Oh house yeah. Oh yeah. You see how shit. we? Oh Hell man. Yeah. So I'm trying to. I'm still losing that fat. But on top yeah. of that, I still have like, I think, um, my lymphatic system. Uh -huh. My stomach is still not. I can feel that it's still not on track. Okay. So it's not flushing my system all the way like it should. Once it's actually on track, mm -hmm. I think the weight will be, you know, faster. I've been running and stuff like that. But okay. I still want a little bit of surgery, just a little bit, just a little bit. What about that ass? Uh, yeah, I'm not touching my ass because I've seen too many people set, come in there with a perfect ass and then they mess it up. And we all know, like, when it comes to BBLs, that's the most dangerous surgery in the world yeah that's true number yeah. one most dangerous surgery in the world you go in there with a perfect ass they say don't broke don't break was not fixed yeah if it's not broke and i can just see it, my yeah. ass been wops out of me like get to a physical altercation with that damn surgeon yeah it's just mm -hmm. find you a good one no uh, i'm good <laughs> i'm so good i don't want that much booty like that's just you know Mm, I mean, imagine, okay, you're getting discounts and free stuff now, favoritism. So imagine, you know, a little bit, a little bit, little, you're 46 inches now, right? Yeah. Yes. So imagine even 50, how much more? Oh, damn. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm only 5'3". Damn, a 50 inch ass? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you gonna be walking around here like pebbles? I would need, need a cock and bounce on that ass. <laughs> a 50 inch ass? Nah, baby. Uh, what are some things that you want to see change in the industry specific to women artists? I would like to see uh, women not be, um, I guess, shunned because of their age. I think um, people start to treat women differently when they, they reach an age uh, plateau, and I don't think that's cool. They let guys rap in their 40s, 50s, 60s if they wanted to, nobody says anything. But I, I see like women get less you know, promoted, they start having kids, get married in the industry, mm -hmm. and um, I was just like more diverse. Every woman doesn't have to show that they ask. So I would like to see more, like, uh, like ma mainly like a um, more diverse uh, set of women. Like, if, you know, you got the ones that's gonna show a lot of ass and you got ones that's not gonna show it. I wanna just see more. I think there needs to be more balance in that respect uh, when it comes to the, like female rap. I, don't, I just think they're promoting one, one type of image and saying that's what a female rapper is. But that's not true. Mm. You got Lauren Hills, you know what I'm saying? That wouldn't dare show they damn near kneecap. And they yeah. just want to talk about that real struggle rap. Yeah. And we need to see more faces like that. It's like, stop saying, like, this is what a female rapper is. You're only talking about ass and sucking dick. Yeah. Not cool. Good point. Good point. Um, and, you know, going to like, Male artists like Snoop Dogg still does concerts and still occasionally puts out music. How old is he? No one ever gonna say, "Oh, he too old." <laughs> right. Go sit down, Paw Paw. <laughs> Nobody. My, and I'm uh, and I like uh, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, and, and my personal favorite rapper, uh, male rapper that is, Ice Cube. He, you know, I think he was in Houston fairly recently. Mm -hmm. We're down there at. Um, Still the Houston area, that new stadium they built out there in Sugarland, uh, right. Smart Financial Center. You know, mm -hmm. he still rapping touring and stuff so how long does it take to pump out an album an entire album um well i have to first pump out an album oh, i haven't done I an album. You... no because oh. so i have a, a lot of different things working against me uh, so i have anxiety oh shit! I and that. yeah i have a very bad case of anxiety so for me doing a long-term project wouldn't be um, something that's ideal right now. 
it requires a lot of time, a lot of recording, and sometimes you might not you might not roll with that song. I'm okay with like a short body of work, like three singles or uh, the EP. So far, has been the mm -hmm. longest uh, as far as like professional body of work I put out, and that was six songs. They were trying to push eight, and I'm like, now you push it. Okay, okay. So, um, but yeah, it, it's time consuming for sure. Gotcha. Um, what about live performances? Do you feel also, this kind of goes back to the whole objectifying by, do you feel that you get more of a pop of a live performance of, you know, if you're with the less clothes you have on versus, you know, like something you wore at the MLK, uh, uh, ceremony? Well, I'm, I'm not getting anything now because I'm, I'm tired of performing for free. Mm, damn. Yeah. Y'all need to book me and pay me. Um, How they pay us? They need to shut your ass. What? They need to. Pay. I'm part of this team too, guys. Shut dude. up! You always, you, you know what? You play me. My coin, shit. Seventy five. Yeah, they gotta. I, I want to get paid though. I know I'm good. I've been doing this for a very long time. I've opened up for some of the best artists out here and around uh, the city, outside of the city. So, um, to answer your question, honestly. I haven't been treated much different. Like if I had jeans on, mm -hmm. I, a track suit, um, I guess they they could see ass. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna still dress sexy, but I'm saying like I don't want to just say if I dress a certain this um, if I dress a certain type of way, I got special privilege because I won um, a best rapper in a track suit. An all blue tracksuit. Damn, it would be blue. Yeah, and people was like, I got the same effect. Like, damn, she she bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it don't matter. I think in terms of that, people just want to see you put on a good show. That's good. They just want to see good. you yeah, move the crowd. They don't really too much care about what you wear. That's good. Yeah. So what are some of your future projects? You got anything going on this year? You've been doing a lot of stuff with movies, but yeah. you know, today we're talking about the, the music. Style, yeah, music, yeah, music rap, so. Um, so the music we're we're working on um deciding if we're going to put out a a video for i'm a vibe um there's another single out that i wish that we would have rolled with but i'm a vibe um is doing well so there's possible talk about a single with that i'm getting ready to drop a song called pressed uh featuring jay will on that one um i might be doing a video for that one i want to do more visuals I'm not gun ho to really just be performing what do you mean by a whole visuals? lot. Like I want to put out more videos. That was that was okay. some complaints to some of my listeners. Like they were like more visuals, videos, music videos to the songs and stuff. Okay. So I was like, okay, cool, I respect that. So I said for uh, I'm a vibe. I'll probably shoot a video for it. and then um, for press, I'm gonna shoot a video for that one and just put I'm just continue to keep dropping songs. Um, I don't want to feel pressure to necessarily have to make music. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I just want it to be organic and um, I want to uh, be more behind the scenes promoting um, areas that I didn't think that our team covered when it came to uh, songs in the past. I, okay. I want to you know, make sure we spend our time and money right this time. So okay. yeah, I got a few things coming up. And speaking of money, Mm -hmm. Good segue, by the way. Um, how much does it cost to be a rapper? Like, can you go over us, like, you know, the mm -hmm. the cost for recording, mixing, promotion, shooting a video? Of course, you being a woman, you know, hair, makeup, outfits, location, right. the whole the, the the whole thing. For one, being a, a rapper or any type of artist in the industry is going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. You're going to spend hundreds to thousands easily. Um, and, and being a woman, you really break the bank because we have to get our hair, we have to get our nails, feet done. We have to have accessories. We have to have underclothes. Mm -hmm. um, we have to have, you know, some, everything got to stand out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, hair alone can be 300 plus. God, dog. Yeah, we talking about like, like really good weave. You don't want, like me personally, I don't wear the cheap shit. Yeah. When it comes to hair weave, I spend top quality on my hair weave. This is verified. So I usually spend three to 400. 
and before I started selling hair. Now that I have my connection, I get really good hair for the low. Lucky me. But uh, before if I that, able. okay. <laughs> and but you still, them girls still want their <clears throat> coins, so you can spend about two hundred, three hundred on a sewing, just getting it sewn in. Damn. And then let's not talk about wigs. A good wig is already three to five hundred. Shit. I've seen some wigs as high as a thousand. Damn. Human hair because you could change it up anyway yeah. if you want. Oh yeah, that makes sense. It's, yeah. it's, it is expensive <clears throat> being a female artist, and then like when we're talking about videos, um, now that I'm looking at it, a video could cost anywhere from four to a thousand dollars. Like a, if you want a decent video, you need to spend four hundred plus. Anything under that, you, 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 I don't okay. know, but probably a little iffy. Yeah. You might get lucky if someone doing a deal and it's three hundred mm-hmm. and fifty, and but they know they usually four hundred plus. Okay. Because I've seen that, um, and just locations. I just thank God for Peer Space. My uh, producer told me about Peer Space, and that saved my life because it's easy to get any location you want, and then you pay hourly for it, and then go from there. So, but in general, just and then we have this thousands. place where, so yeah, really, next yeah, time you, you shoot can video, realize that you can shoot it here. I was thinking about doing that for my... press, like th- th- putting a video together yeah. real quick and it wouldn't, uh, yeah, wouldn't be anything. Okay, mm-hmm. guess now as we wrap this up, we we'll get to some fan questions. So, okay. um, we have one I'm looking at on my phone right now. L6 wrote, Miss Boo, have you ever thought about doing a crossover song with a rock band? Oh, they are in my mind. <clears throat> it's funny that, that this person asked that. Yes. In another life, I'm actually the lead singer in a rock band. That was one of my dreams. I, I, I grew up with the next door neighbor who had a rock band. And okay. uh, I, he would let me sing from time to time. And I was like 12, 13. Um, so, yes, I would. And um, I, I think that would be a dope experience to, to do, to cross over. But... It would have to be the right song, the right band, and I would have to make sure it's marketed. Like, we would have to have some serious promo okay. to make sure the song get heard. And with that being said, I got one to kind of piggyback off of that question. Have you thought about, I know there's a lot of stuff that comes up, like, for example, with the whole, um, you know, what we call it, the, the whole, the kind of chauvinistic side of, of female rap, but, like, women who perform in rock bands, <clears throat> mm-hmm. They could be fully equipped, like like metalheads. They just care about the music. They don't care about what you wear. Right. And I've seen videos. I, I you know I listen to metal myself. I mean, shit. You know, one of my best friends is Dicey, and she's mm-hmm. a fucking queen metalhead. You know, and you go on stage wearing some fucking camo boots and a camo pants and a tank top and rock it down, give a shit. See, have you right. thought about just switching genres because of all this bullshit that comes with rap with? with objectifying women? Nah, not so much because hip hop is embedded in my soul. Mm-hmm. And don't get don't get it twisted. I write rock. I've written for a country artist. Okay. But as far as just like me personally, I love hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. just it's just a part of me. It's in my DNA. So I, I just I would say true to the game. And if I never make it, I'm content with that because I can go back and say, damn, like I, I'm i in Google search. I was here. I, did, I was yeah. doing this. Like I have somewhat of a little legacy that I left behind, but it's, you know, I'm content. But hip hop, nah, that's me. This is, that's my lane, you know. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. We will end it on that note. Thank you so much again. Thank you for having this, me. Uh, you know, it's a topic a friend of mine thought of, and I was like, that's not a bad idea. So um, I know you're busy as hell. Let's get out of here. How can people find you on the social medias? Man, y'all better find me at Real Miss Blue and The Real Miss Blue on Twitter and Miss Blue Radio Show. Check out my show. Tap okay. in. And I'll put the links in the description. And don't forget, guys, the one stop shop for everything unrestricted is The Unrestricted Podcast. Dot com. I want to thank, I want to personally take this time and shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Uh, thanks for helping us pay the bills here. Appreciate y'all. And if you want to get involved with Patreon, you can sign up for as little as a dollar a month. From a dollar a month to $3 a month gets you access to behind the scenes stuff, 
Um, like we might do a skit after this, who knows? Mm -hmm. Early release of the episodes within 48 hours after we record them, and plus more bonus content. And of course, follow us on Unrestricted on all the uh, platforms, and uh, let us know what you think of this episode. Do you think women are objectified? Do you think Miss Blue should switch from rap to, you know, fucking heavy metal, country? Zotico, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah. That's dope. Let Put it in the know. comments. <laughs> share, like, subscribe this episode. And until next time, I'm your host, Ish Berry with Miss Blue. We sign off. Take care of yourselves and each other. We out of here. Want to help the channel remain upstanding and dedicated to the truth? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below.